China intends to construct a 15,000 km undersea cable to Germany. A grand scheme to finish the international peace cable. China and Europe will be connected via fiber optic cable. Undoubtedly a good idea. The construction of international telecoms transmission will eventually help at least 2 billion people. However, environmentalists are concerned since the project involves several nations. Will the installation of undersea optical cables that span international boundaries contaminate or emit radiation into the ocean? As a result, the outside world previously believed that the plan may not come to pass. China's undersea optical cable network has actually only grown in recent years. Perhaps you are unaware of that. China's undersea optical cable technology was still rather dated seven years ago. China still uses a lot of undersea cable networks that were created in Europe and the U.S. However, China has not only constructed a 50,000 km undersea optical cable system in just seven years, but has also assisted numerous Asian and Southeast Asian and Southeast Asian nations in laying submarine optical cables to advance their communication. And a good illustration of this is the Maldives. China will have installed hundreds of kilometers of undersea optical cables for the Maldives by 2022 after the completion of the China Maldives Friendship Grid. The Maldives transitioned from the two era to the four era from that time. It has an extremely reliable network, one that even directly outperforms many American suburbs. Even if American network technology is cutting edge, the One Belt, One Road program has helped many regions that still have terrible network signals. China presently has one of the top four global positions in this area. The rapid growth of China's optical cable technology has surprised several nations. China has traditionally held the view that it must provide for its own national security, infrastructure, and information security. Additionally, the United States' monopoly on this technology is not beneficial to the world's peaceful advancement. In order to solve the deep sea submarine optical cable system's three global technological problems, ultra long distance photoelectric transmission, ultra high water pressure resistance, watertight hydrogen tightness, and ultra high reliability, they established their own team. The impact of this technology on information security, construction, and national defense is incalculable. China has already finished building 12 internal undersea optical lines. They have a wealth of expertise building undersea optical cables. In order to achieve their objectives, they intend to construct a 15,000 keem undersea optical cable. France will be the first stop on the optical cable's journey to Germany. The proposal of China's plan a few years ago stunned all of Europe. When the project was being built, the United States did not want Europe to work with China on it. Whether the project will be impacted is unknown. In order to verify the status of the project with China, the German representative in charge traveled to China in November of this year. The Peace Optical Cable is the name of the undersea optical cable that is now being built in China. China Hong Kong Group is the project's principal construction contractor. This corporation, which is among the top three global suppliers of fiber optic transmission, is the biggest internet service provider in China. According to reports, the project involves two parts. From Xinjiang, China, the first phase involves connecting Pakistan, Kenya, Egypt, and Europe. The second phase involves constructing a route from Kenya to South Africa. In actuality, undersea optical connections have only recently become commonplace. In 1988, the first submarine optical cable in history was constructed. This optical cable has a total length of 6,700 kilometers and connects the United States to Europe. Submarine optical cables are necessary for the United States and Europe to have connectivity for information security. When the optical connection is severed, company will inevitably suffer, resulting in significant losses. The transmission volume per second of China's optical cable, which runs from Africa to Europe at an incredibly rapid rate, is comparable to 90,000 hours of Netflix playing in the United States. This is crucial for many applications and may speed up network services, which considerably helps Chinese businesses operating in Europe and Africa. Thus, the fiber optic cable was given that name. Although China oversaw the underwater optical cable's development, it made a commitment not to obstruct communications with other nations using the cable. It will be monitored and operated by several nations. As a result, the optical cable is also known as the Digital Silk Road of China. Data predictions indicate that Africa will become the blue ocean of the internet within the next five years. The income of communication operators alone, without any additional internet services, can total $51 billion. Germany is where the optical cable's terminus is located. German borders, Poland, and the Czech Republic to the east, Austria and Switzerland to the south, 
the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, and France to the west. It is a country in Central Europe in the North Denmark. And the Baltic Sea and North Sea, as a nation, it has the most neighbors in all of Europe. After the optical cable is finished, it will undoubtedly grow in significance throughout Europe and aid China in extending the market for peace. Fiber optic cable. What challenges will China face in order to construct a non-violent optical cable? It firstly encompasses a large number of nations in Asia, Africa, and Europe. The principal nodes also include Djibouti, Egypt, Kenya, Cyprus, Malta, and Germany in addition to China. According to statistics, the prior U.S. and Japanese undersea optical cables were only 6,200 kilometers long. But at an average price of 30,000 U.S. per kilometer, the whole cost may have reached 300 U. A 15,000 cam underwater cable from China to Germany will cost at least $400 million used to build. However, the new crown epidemic's effects have caused China's economy to deteriorate during the past two years, and the plan has also been put on hold. Because of this, several Western nations don't think China is a contributing factor. The complexity of the sea floor and the expanse of the ocean are additional factors. Why must it be put on the seabed when the water is so salty and the pressure is so high? Isn't it preferable to have it on land? It should be noted that wireless communication technology requires a huge number of base stations and servers in the middle since it cannot be implemented with only two devices. This is also inextricably linked to space-based satellites at the same time. You should be aware that launching into space is an extremely costly endeavor. Overall, the cost is higher than underwater optical cables and there is a very major issue with wireless transmission. In other words, it's really simple to interfere with the transmission. Not only is it prone to latency issues, but there are occasions when the signal will simply vanish. The optical fiber is additionally covered in high teach materials that can effectively protect the internal optical fiber. In addition to having a structure that is resistant to damage, submarine optical cables also make use of very light materials. Terrestrial optical connections do not have these benefits. In other words, submarine optical cables are more stable and safe than terrestrial optical cables while having lower manufacturing costs. Additionally, it can stop corrosion caused by salt water and has higher anti-interference capability. Copper pipes with paraffin and carbonic acid resin within may also have some protective properties. Submarine optical cables must withstand seawater pressure tests for both natural disasters and human factors in addition to dealing with seawater corrosion. Its useful life can frequently last for nearly 25 years. As for whether installing cables at sea will pollute the ocean, scientists have not yet identified any negative effects that submarine cables will have on the marine environment. During construction, cables are separated into deep sea and shallow sea cables. Although there may be short-term marine environment pollution, overall the marine environment and the environment will not be impacted. Marine life causes damage and pollution. However, many nations have questioned this because of the significant investment in this project, which prevents the investment cost from being recovered in the near future. What then can China and the rest of the world expect from the submarine optical cable dubbed Peace? Can China accomplish that? Here's one more exciting video. New $260 billion China's Russia railway project that shocked the world. US is against it. I know you want to know more about this story, so just click on this video right here.